How do you use one of these? What the hell are these? Do you actually need those? And why do people use these? Gym gear. What do we need? What don't we need? Hi guys, how are you doing? So this one's gonna be a video on gym gear, what we need, what we don't need, and there's plenty of stuff out there. Like any sport or hobby, there is loads and loads of companies trying to sell you all types of different gear, and they just wanna take your money. Uh, there's loads and loads of stuff that you could buy, and I'm here to sort of say, okay, I've been using stuff for about 20, 25 years now. I've kind of worked out you know, what's good, what's not. Uh, some of it's gonna be personal choice, which we'll get into, uh, but we're just gonna go through some of the essential bits, what I use, and then what other people might find useful for what they're doing. So, firstly, I wanna say, you don't actually need any gear, and if the lack of gear is stopping you from getting to the gym, then please just get to the gym, you know, that's the most important thing. You can train, especially in the first few weeks. You won't need any gear at all. Nothing's essential. Uh, there's nothing that you can buy that's going to like stop you from training if you don't own it. The reality is all you need is some clothing that you can wear to the gym and you don't really even need much special clothing. It needs to be loose fitting enough that you can move around. Some gyms will have rules about clothes that don't have like outside buttons on because they don't want you ripping up their um, you know, rubberized seating and stuff on some of the machines, which is fair play. Uh, some gyms might have specialist rules about clothing. I avoid those gyms like the plague. Uh, I just wear a pair of military boots, a pair of combat trousers, um, like a normal t-shirt, a cotton t-shirt, and then sometimes like an overshirt if it's a bit chilly. That's literally it. Um, I've had a bit of a um, couple of people give me a hard time about my gym gear. A couple of guys at work actually thought it was pretty funny. They're like, dude, you just wear like normal clothes to the gym. And uh, I was like, well, yeah, you know, that's, that's what I've always done. I've never been one of these people that buys like Lycra stuff and special gym wear and all that kind of thing. If that's, you know, it, it basically comes down to a fashion thing at that point. You know, if you want to buy active wear and look like a super gym type person, then crack on. Um, but, you know, that's not going to give you any great performance advantage. Having the most modern wicking fibres or whatever isn't going to, like, make you magically lift heavier weights or anything. So uh, I, I would really not be concerned. The main part is comfort. You know, can you move around in it? Is it comfortable? Are you confident in it? You know, like you don't want to wear something to the gym that's going to rob you of confidence. So this might be more um, orientated towards girls, but some guys as well. You know, if you're not built like a tank, probably don't go and buy like a string like vest or, you know, like super tight lycra trunks or something trying to emulate bodybuilders because you're going to get there and you're going to feel a bit ridiculous. And, you know, the same with girls, if you're buying stuff that looks ultra sexy on the peg and then you get to the gym and you're like spending every five seconds worrying about things falling out or whatever, that's probably not going to be that good for your self-confidence either. So pick something that's sensible, comfortable and you can get the work done in. That's the main thing that you want out of the gym. Right, clothing out the way. The first thing I would consider buying if I was going to the gym and I was starting to get into it would be a lifting belt. So there's a few different types of belts on the market. Um, there's belt, I put up some pictures. So there's belts that have like a wider back section and then are thinner around the sides and front. And they are either Olympic belts or common weightlifting belts. Now, the belts are all different because there's different categories of lifting. And if you lift seriously, you know, competitively, the type of lifting you do will actually have some very, very tight regulations about what type of belts you can actually wear. So Olympic lifting belts 
are made especially for people that do the Olympic lifts. So they're, you know, picking the weights up off the floor and chucking them above their heads. You've seen them in the Olympics. They buy those belts specifically because that's the guidelines that they have to lift within. You know, it, de it designates the thickness of the belt. It designates how wide the belt is on the back, etc., etc. So unless you're an Olympic lifter, I would not bother buying an Olympic belt. A standard weightlifting belt, they're okay. They're just sort of designed to give you a bit of support and a bit of confidence. They're based on the shape of a Olympic belt. Uh, but they differ in sizes, so they're probably going to be a bit thicker maybe than an Olympic belt. Um, they're okay, you know, but the real reason you wear a belt is because you're going to put that above your uh, waist, and I'll demonstrate with this one in a second, and you're basically breathing out into the tight belt. So when you breathe out into it, it's kind of reinforcing your whole midsection your core so as you stand up you know with a heavy weight on your back if you're squatting for example or as you're deadlifting and you pull the weight up off the floor you're breathing out into the belt and you're really solidifying the midsection and you're you're wanting to do that belt up pretty damn tight around your midsection so you can breathe out into it and when you breathe out it's forcing your whole midsection out into the belt and then you've got something really sort of gripping you around the uh, the outside of your body and it's like a reinforcing strap around your body if you like so it does give you a lot more confidence and in that manner it's going to give you more stability and be protective in that way that's how the belt protects you belts do not protect you in any other magic way you know I see people just walking around the gym in belts and they're not kind of using them properly they are thinking that just by wearing the belt, that's what's giving them the protection. And that isn't true. It's the whole breathing technique whilst you lift that's actually giving you the protective effect. And the protection is through stabilization of the lift. It isn't through like back support or you know any of these other kind of things that people talk about with belts. So this one here is a powerlifting belt. So you can see all the way round it's pretty much the same width and some powerlifting federations will have different rules on how thick they are and whatever you can see it's really really thick it's very tough but you can also get them you know in a single prong or you can get a lever system which actually sort of cranks a lever over the lever ones are actually pretty sensible because they're a bit easier to do up I've always used these type of belts my my normal belt would be way down here and this one I'm putting up a little bit higher and do it up real tight cinch it right up and that way I'm gonna breathe out sort of make out like you're you know like a pushing out your tummy and um, you're pushing out into that belt so that's what's giving you that stability of the midsection so it's stopping you from sort of uh, you know it's giving you a, a really strong core and it's just keeping everything in line nice and tight these are the type of belts I would recommend for people that are lifting in the gym simply because they're going to give you the most support you know they've got the most thickness all the way around they're nice thick chunky belts so you can really breathe out into them and you can sort of put a lot of strain on these and uh, they're actually doing the job that they're designed for that's why power lifters use them because they're going to give them the maximum sort of stability in the lift so this one is by a company called gunsmith fitness they're actually a, a pretty decent company i'll chuck a, a link up i really like their belts um, they're not super cheap but they're not ridiculously expensive either you know you can pay a lot of money for this stuff um, but like most things you know especially something that you're going to be relying on if you're going to do some heavy lifting um, they will last you a lifetime and what's the point in cheaping out and buying like a 10 15 pound belt 
that might let you down and if that lets you down in the middle of a lift you're going to have a serious problem you know that's suddenly going to throw your game right off and if you're halfway through a squat you're going to have real big injuries so uh, I would not cheap out on a belt guys I would spend probably 30 pounds upward on a belt which considering it's a lifetime purchase it's never going to let you down um, I would you know not think that's a ridiculous amount of money to spend okay I think that would be my first purchase for sure because it's got a sort of safety factor in it um, a lot of people the first purchase they make is a pair of gloves and the reason being is because when you first start going down the gym it can be a bit uncomfortable on your hands now there's two ways of looking at this so I don't wear gloves I don't know if you can see but I've got pretty calloused hands a lot of rough skin on there and if you're a guy and you know you're a sort of um, working guy uh, you might actually like that because it toughens your hands up you know they get really used to it so you end up with nice tough hands and then when you kind of shake another guy's hand they're like oh he does a bit of work you know so uh, that can be quite cool if you're maybe um, someone who works with their hands let's say you do massage for a living you probably don't want massive calluses on your hands because your clients are not going to really want that rubbed all over their body if you're female, you know, you might not want calloused hands. It's uh, probably not something you would desire. So again, gloves might be uh, important there. And if you're going to buy a pair of gloves, there's loads of different ones to choose from. Most of them are fingerless. And uh, to be honest, you know, as long as they're comfortable and they suit your fashion sense, you can't really go too far wrong. They're going to get worn out you know reasonably quickly in a gym you probably find that within six months or so you're going to be needing a new pair of gloves but hey they're like you know five or ten pounds or something like that so uh, it's not going to break the bank uh, like I said not something I, I wear but I can definitely see why people would wear them and it also you know if you're just starting out doing chins and stuff like that they will give you a little bit more grip so it's worthwhile for that reason you know if it helps you get like an extra rep out then again it's money well spent we're talking on grip um i wear these quite a lot lifting straps and i'll throw up a video i've put it up before of me sort of putting these on a bar they literally slip over your wrist then you just do them up like so hangs out the back and then that bit just curls around the bar and then you hold the bar like so and you're gripping the bar in that sort of curled strap and they give you a hell of a lot of extra grip on the bar they stop the bar rolling out of your fingers and that's something that's really really beneficial very useful for when you first start lifting maybe deadlifting and stuff like that and also as you progress and you get really heavy you will get to a point where the weight is you know so much for doing reps uh, that you're not gonna your fingers are gonna give out before your back muscles are for example if I'm training back I don't want my fingers to dictate when I'm gonna stop doing my set I want my back muscles to dictate that because that's the muscle that I'm actually training now if you're a out and out power lifter and you're competing in competitions where things like this aren't allowed which is very likely if you're a power lifter then you would probably be using chalk but the difference being that power lifters are doing one lift they're doing one rep you know one heavy rep and then they're putting the weight back down again uh, a lot of power lifters will do multiple reps at slightly lower weights before they progress to like a single rep at a higher weight or they'll have a light week where they're doing reps and then they'll have a heavy week when they're just doing singles all kinds of training patterns so these can come into use i didn't used to use these really at all when i was powerlifting because it gets you into bad habits and the more you cannot use them the stronger your grip's going to get and you know that became really important if you're trying to pull 300 kilos off the floor one of the first things that's going to fail is your grip you know often you, you see people drop weights in powerlifting competitions just because they can't actually hold them in their hands. They've got plenty of strength in their back and legs and they're let down with their fingers. So 
those might be guys that have uh, kind of over uh, emphasize the use of aids in the gym when they're training and then when they finally come to comp they're just finding their grip strength isn't there but for normal guys like uh, you know just doing your standard weight training in the gym these things are a godsend so some of you might see these things kicking around looks kind of like a belt it's got this chain hanging off it often you see them hang up in gyms what on earth is that? Well, that is a dipping belt and it basically uh, is used for hanging weights from your waist. So it doesn't actually lock around your waist. I'll see if I can see if I can demonstrate for you. So they've normally got a carabiner clip like so and then you just put that around the waist that loops through like that so the belt doesn't actually meet in the middle and then you would loop that through the weight and then click it here so then the weight is hanging down in the middle and once the weight's hanging down it will actually just hold that there and that will just stay on your back so that's all that's for is just hanging weight to add weights for things like chins or on the dipping bar do you need one not really you're not going to need one for certainly probably a few months because it's going to take you a long time to start uh, hanging weights off yourself when you're doing dips and chins they're probably two of the hardest exercises in the gym and it's going to take you a while you know if you can do three or four sets of at least 10 reps uh, per per set then great you know you, then you're going to start needing to hang weights but if you're only doing a, a handful of reps and then you're absolutely worn out just keep working at body weight you know you don't need to hang weight off yourself most gyms will have one of those kicking around in the corner somewhere so uh, it's maybe an unnecessary expense you can just use theirs i've always kept one in the back of the car just in case because i do use them quite often so next we have wraps so first i've got these wrist wraps so these are for people that suffer from wrist issues so they undo like so they're elasticated you just throw your thumb through that part there and then stretch it out around the wrist around we go you're going to keep it fairly high up on the wrist the point being is it's stopping the wrist from moving that way and that way so it's, it's I can't actually bend my wrist like that because it's kind of stopping that from happening so of course when you're doing a lift it braces your wrist and you're not going to damage your wrist if you've got bad wrists in the first place if you haven't got bad wrists and you've got no need for these I, I to be honest wouldn't bother with them because again they're going to kind of create weakness in the wrist because that's going to be a part of the body you're going to do these lifts and all these stabilizing muscles are going to be working you know shoulders arms uh, your core etc and then you're just going to have weakness in the wrists permanently because they're never going to have to kind of stabilize themselves they're always completely braced with those things so i've only ever used those when i've had issues with my wrist i used to have a bit of carpal tunnel back when i was uh, seriously lifting i don't really get that anymore so i don't tend to use those anymore next one is leg wraps you can see there's a lot of wrap there and uh you would use these for squatting uh, if you're doing really heavy squatting and again you would have to look into competition rules you know if you're powerlifting seriously or doing any sort of competitive uh, squatting then you're going to have to look and see if leg wraps are allowed because they do give you a little bit of an advantage you know it's only small but because they're elasticated and they're so long and you obviously wind them around so many times around your leg they do give you a, a certainly more stability but they give you a little bit of a kind of spring back motion so I start bottom of the knee you want to start with the the blank piece the one without the velcro on 
just gonna keep it kind of fairly stretched because it's going to bind onto itself as we start wrapping around they're a bit awkward to get on but gonna go round and make sure that they're overlapping as we go round so you've got like half and half overlapping on itself above the knee then back down again And there you can see I bound up the leg and that is going to give you that sort of springy motion on the knee they're very tight so you only put them on when you're actually doing your lift because they're so tight they will start messing with the circulation in your legs Now, why would I recommend those? Well, I'd recommend those to people either that had really bad knees and they still wanted to do some leg exercises and that just enabled them to do the leg exercise without any pain or causing more discomfort to themselves. But obviously you should go and get medical advice if you've got knees that are that bad and you're training with them. Get some advice before you just strap them up and train because you might do yourself more damage. These aren't going to stop you doing damage if you've got you know skeletal damage there in the first place all they're going to do is maybe make you a bit more comfortable and give you a bit more stability and what they're really used for is when you get really really heavy and you're sort of high-end squats and stuff like that they do give you a bit of stability not unlike what the belt's doing you know they just keep everything in line and they are like an extra safety measure because one of the things that can happen obviously is suddenly your your leg will kind of bow uh, you know suddenly if it's under a lot of weight and you could actually break a leg if you're doing some really heavy squats so this prevents your leg from sort of bowing or uh, your knees from folding or anything like that or it certainly gives you a lot less risk of that happening so you know what once you're at that level when you're doing some really really heavy weights you probably progressed quite a long way in the gym anyway and you're going to be well aware of whether you actually need to use these or not for that kind of thing and hopefully you're going to take all the precautions that are required that's the only gear that i actually own for the gym and to be honest i don't use these much anymore because i don't really squat really heavy anymore um I don't use the wrist wraps like I said I use the belt all the time when I'm doing any exercise that involves me you know bending like a deadlift um, a squat anything that's kind of putting strain on my back uh, some people even use them for bench and they say that it gives them some sort of advantage for benching I haven't found that so it doesn't bother me uh, I wouldn't find that particularly comfortable and I do use the dipping belt quite a lot now there are other things that people use in the gym that may or may not be of use to you so you might see people squatting and using various different sort of things on the bar to actually make it a bit more comfortable for them and those things range from kind of plastic accoutrements that fit across the top of your shoulders or they fit on the bar and kind of to the um, you know form to the shape of the, the shoulder and neck and they're supposed to make the bar sit a bit more comfortably or foam pads that people put on the bar uh, some people just roll a towel up and put that on there um, but there's all kinds of gimmicks that I've seen for that to be honest most serious lifters won't use anything like that because it it tends to push your head forward so if you're squatting your, your bar wants to be way down the back and your head wants to be up in a centralized position and when you start using all those different things it sort of pushes your head forward like this and if your your head is pushed forward you'll find that that makes you much more prone to tipping forward and that is not good uh, so it's it you know it breeds a kind of uh, incorrect stance and, and you really don't want to be doing that so I would personally get used to having the bar just bare 
you know, put enough weight on that you can lift and it's not going to be too uncomfortable and just add more reps. You know, if you find that it's so uncomfortable, the weight on there that it's hurting you, just take a bit of weight off and add more reps until you've built enough back muscle that you can actually add more weight and it's not going to hurt you. Obviously, you know, wear on a squat day, wear like a hoodie or a thick jumper or something that's going to give you a little bit of protection but it's not going to be so much that it's actually pushing you out of your stance so i, I don't like those things some people do that's fine but um you know i personally wouldn't use them then there are loads and loads of attachments that people bring to gyms for you know the cable machines whether that be like a little ankle attachment so you can start um, fastening your ankles to the cable machines and working some leg exercises that way. Some people even bring you know, their own hand grips and uh, different sort of rope grips and stuff like that. That's all good you know, if you find the gym hasn't got the, the stuff that you want for the cable machine. First thing I'd do is ask the gym and, and request that they get it because you're paying a membership and they probably should have a pretty decent selection. Um, but if you can't do that for whatever reason or you're training at home, then yeah, sure, just go and buy the, the bits that you need. Um, I've seen some people bringing down like ankle weights and uh, wrist weights and stuff like that. I personally don't think they're a great benefit. You know, then there's not enough weight on there to actually add it. You know, you're not going to gain lean mass by wearing like a couple of pounds on your ankles. Uh, they might have some benefit for like a functional um, activity. So if you're a runner, a sprinter, and you were putting on these body weights and then sprinting and then taking them off, you know, and uh, you found that you felt a lot lighter or something, that might have some sort of psychological benefit. It might have some sort of functional benefit in terms of doing your sprint training. Um, if you're like a MMA fighter or something and you're just trying to absolutely exhaust your body and you're like running up and down stairs and hills, then adding those sort of body weights might be of benefit. But I don't think that, you know, walking around in the gym with them on and, and kind of wobbling around and waving your arms around is going to um, help anything. Just use some dumbbells and uh, uh, that's what they're there for. You know, there's there's very little benefit to that. It's worth buying a, a decent water bottle for the gym and uh, there's a fashion at the moment i don't know what this is all about like it seems to be like uh you know the tougher you are the more manly you are the bigger your water bottle needs to be uh, like to the point that people are almost walking around with those sort of jugs that you see in an office building that people are like siphoning water out of like you know no no one <laughs> needs that much water in one go there's probably a fountain in the gym you know just buy a sensible water bottle and top it up and of course there's um protein shaker so that's generally after the gym uh, if you've got a, a protein and carb drink which is a pretty sensible thing to do i generally leave that in the car if you buy protein on deals you can probably uh get one of those for free but they're like two or three pound on amazon i chuck a link up um, but generally what I do is I fill my water bottle when I finished in the gym and then I just take that out of me and then I just fill up my uh, protein shaker in the car from the water bottle and, uh, and shake it up in there so I don't have to carry it around in the gym and, and mess about with it. Some people like to take um, a notepad and a pen in the gym. That's kind of one of my, um, I wouldn't say pet hates, like I don't hate anything in the gym, you know, everyone's different. Um, I'm not like hating on people but um, I just think there isn't that much to remember like if you can't remember what weight you benched last week then you probably need to uh, look at taking some nootropic uh, substances to like boost your memory or something you know you should be able to pretty much remember what weights you've done for what exercises uh, it's the sort of thing that kind of new people in the gym are quite tempted to do because they like to look back over the historic data and maybe see how they've progressed but you can easily do like the reason it's a kind of peeve of mine because it doesn't affect me but i see people spending so much time messing about with these books and it kind of robs them of intensity so the whole point of going to the gym is to be really intense on each set and, and like work to failure get like a really aggressive good set out so you're actually getting that muscle you know really broken down so that's the way it's going to grow whether you're a male or a female 
that's the same for both of you you need to absolutely smash those sets so that then when you go home and rest you're actually growing lean mass so even if you're a female that just wants to firm up a bit that's the way you firm up a bit you know you're not going to firm up by jiggling a few light weights around writing it down in a book and then going home and the same for guys, you know, you're not going to put lean mass on by doing a few weights and never to failure and not really making an effort and then writing it all down in a book and going home. And if you're spending, you know, more time writing in a book than you are on being intense, that's not good. And it seems to me like the people I see lifting with real intensity, they're just totally focused on the weights and what they're doing and they're not focused on anything else. So they're not playing around with their phones. They're not writing stuff down in a book and they're not looking back over their historical weight data to see what they lifted before they're just lifting as much as they can on the day and that's all that matters is are you lifting as much as you possibly can at this time right now in the gym are you training to failure you know that's a yes or a no question you don't need to historically kind of date that back and then you should be able to remember, you know, if you benched 50 kilos the week before and this week you're benching 55 and you just about managed it, great, you've achieved something, you know what I mean? But if you haven't, it doesn't matter. If you're only benching 45 this week and you're still trained to failure, you're still in the, in the ballpark, you're doing the right thing. You won't always progress. Sometimes you will take a step back because your body will be tired, you will have had a hard day, whatever. So don't beat yourself up about that. And that's the other reason that I don't like writing everything down is because I think it gets people into this idea that every week's going to be better, it's going to be better, and it doesn't necessarily go like that. So looking back in those books, it can be like a bit off-putting for new people that they look back and, oh, I lifted a bit more two weeks ago, and they, they kind of get fixated on it, and it really doesn't matter that much. That's about it, guys. I think I've pretty much covered uh, most of the gear that you'll find people taking in and out of gyms. Uh, the only thing I don't think I mentioned is uh, headbands and wristbands. I think they were in the 80s though, right? No one's wearing those anymore, are they? Um, if you've got any suggestions on what you're going to wear to the gym or what you're thinking of you know, getting for the gym, any equipment you want to ask about, then leave it in the comments. But like I said, the most important thing is you actually go to the gym. Don't let any of this stuff put you off. You don't need any of this stuff to start with and you, you know none of this is going to cost you a fortune really the main thing you're going to need after a few weeks is maybe the belt uh, other than that maybe the gloves if you're that bothered about the, the skin on your hands but uh, the rest of it you can take or leave so save your money to pay your gym membership with get down the gym if you haven't got down the gym yet and you've been watching my videos why haven't you got down the gym get down there if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe because i don't you know make hardly anything out of this everyone who subscribes is helping me massively that uh, you know every penny counts to sort of pay the the lighting bill and um and keep this channel rolling and hopefully as it grows we can start doing some more content i'd like to get around and visit some really cool gyms around the uk like do some reviews maybe talk to a few people in those gyms do a couple of interviews stuff like that so all the money that comes in from the channel gets reimbursed into the the channel and making this content so please do subscribe because that will help me grow the channel and it will help me bring you better content thanks a lot guys see you soon